My name is Jack Neal, and welcome to my YouTube channel, where we cover all things horrifying, disturbing, and morbid. In today's video, we will be viewing various clips that may seem innocent, but will absolutely curdle your blood when you know the backstory. Let's begin. And don't forget, look behind you. Lauren Giddings, a 27-year-old student attending Mercer University Law School, was reported missing in June of 2011. Several days after her disappearance, investigators discovered Lauren's dismembered body inside of a trash bag located in one of the dumpsters outside of her building. Since there were no witnesses to her disappearance, interviews were conducted with students who lived at Lauren's apartment complex. In one of these interviews, fellow law student Stephen McDaniel stated that he knew Lauren quite well. He reportedly mentioned that he had previously asked Lauren on a date, to which she declined. Of those interviewed, Stephen McDaniel's take on the situation was by far the most intriguing. Yeah, Lauren was my neighbor. Um, we're just trying to find out where she is at this point. I mean, no one has seen her since Saturday. I mean, the last time anyone heard from her was an email that she sent out, and I mean, no one's heard from her since. And you, uh, she just recently graduated from Mercer? Yeah, she and I, were, we were both JD students. Um, we graduated back in May. We just don't know where she is. What about um, in the, like, the parking lot area? I know they've been doing a lot of, I think that's where they have recovered the body or whatever they recovered from there. Body? Um, had you heard, had you seen anything there? Had you seen anything there? Hi. I mean, we don't know if this is the same person. You know what I mean? Like, they took out a body there earlier. We don't know if it's the same person or not. So that's how we're trying to ask people if they know who lived there. Are you okay, sir? I, I think I need to sit down. Okay. One would assume this would be a normal reaction when finding out an acquaintance of yours was murdered. But as it turns out, McDaniel was the one who murdered Lauren and hid her body. And his realization instead is that police found her and he is completely and utterly doomed. A 14-year-old streamer who went by the username RoroChan underscore 1999 began streaming in 2012 on the Japanese video sharing service Nico Nico. Her streams mostly consisted of her playing piano, singing, and talking with her audience. But over time, the activities she would do during these live streams became more and more dangerous. She began participating in life-threatening stunts, such as running into traffic and standing at the edge of her apartment balcony on the 13th floor. She commonly states in her streams that her goal was to become an internet legend, even if it meant that she had to die for it. This self-fulfilling prophecy came true on November 24th, 2013 with Roro pointing the camera toward the lower half of her masked face. A clear, I'm scared, can be heard in Japanese. This video Taken from Roro's camera, shows a street view of her balcony. Then the camera begins to shake violently before eventually falling back into her room, facing toward the mirror. The even more haunting reality is that the users participating in Roro's livestream actively encouraged her to jump. Forty-nine-year-old Glenna Durham shot her husband Martin five times in the chest in May of 2015. Following the incident, Martin's ex-wife Christina Keller took ownership of his African grey parrot, Bud, and later reported him reciting the entire incident, mimicking both Glenna and Martin's responses over the course of the argument. 
Christina eventually began to record Bud's imitations, and they were considered by police to be crucial evidence to the case. Forty-four-year-old Shannon Watts returned home to Frederick, Colorado from a business trip early in the morning on August 13th, 2018. When she arrived, her husband Chris was home alone with their two daughters, Bella and Celeste. Later that day, Shannon and the girls were reported missing, and the Frederick Police Department conducted a welfare check at the home. Chris gave the police officers permission to search the house, but there were no signs of Shannon or the two girls. The following video is from Chris Watts' initial interview with police. Yeah, I mean, my kids are my life. I mean, those those smiles light up my life. And there's like, I mean, last night, like, during, like, at, you know, when they usually eat dinner, it was just like, I miss them. Like, I mean, I miss telling them, hey, you got to eat that or you're not going to get your dessert, you know, and just like, you're not going to get your snack after. I, I miss that. Like, I, I miss them, you know, cuddle up on their couches. They have like a Minnie Mouse couch and a Sophia couch that they cuddle up on and watch, you know, Bubba Guppies or something. That's why last night was just horrible. I couldn't do it. it I just, I just want, I want everybody to just come home. Like wherever they're at, come home. As it turns out, Chris Watts later admitted to strangling his pregnant wife Shannon to death and suffocating their two daughters with blankets over their heads. Chris then drove 45 minutes away from the home and placed his two daughters in an oil tank and buried his wife only a couple hundred feet away. The following clip from June of 2012 shows a 20-year-old man playing Dance Dance Revolution at an AMC theater in Connecticut. He is being unknowingly recorded from behind by a group of people who spotted him and can be heard both mocking him and simultaneously admiring his skills at the game. Swag. Nearly six months after this video was recorded, the young man in the video, Adam Lanza, would shoot his own mother four times in the head while she was asleep, and proceed to drive to the nearby Sandy Hook Elementary School, where he would shoot and kill 20 kindergartners and six adults. During the massacre, he yelled abusive words and various obscenities at his victims, with one child reporting that he heard a fellow classmate cry out, Help me, I don't want to be here. And Lanza replied, Well, you're here. Upon hearing the sirens of reporting police units, Lanza pulled out a 10mm pistol and shot himself in the head. No motive for the shooting was ever found. <laughs> 